we have in these several days traffic in high mountains, spiritual mountain terrains. But the Lord gives us hinds feet so we can navigate where others cannot. In fact, if you get high enough, the devil can't reach you. He's been thrown out of heaven. You've been raised up and made to sit together in heavenly places. He's not there. Can't get there. Now I wanted to say a word to the younger in years and perhaps to those who are, these are relatively new things we've been talking about. You can understand some of them. Some of these things will be a little difficult, perhaps. But here's my advice to you. When you hear messages that appear to be over your head, and all of us uh, have had this experience and still do, reach up, reach up high, and just try and get one thing. Just get one thing. When you get it, Jesus left a promise for you. To him that hath shall more be given. Amen. That's the secret. I've given you a quick study course in how to learn. <laughs> now my message tonight is a new progenitor and a new progeny. And a good brother told me I tried to find out what those words meant. I don't know what those words mean. Well, I didn't used to know what they meant either. But I'm glad to share with you what they mean. A new progenitor means a new family head, a new federal head. Head of a new race, the head of a new order. We might call him the father. Progenies, the offspring of the father, the children of the father, the lineage of the father. So here's what I'm going to proclaim to you tonight, that there's a new race. If you're not part of it, you'll be damned. If you are part of it, you can't be damned. <laughs> and I'm also going to announce that if you aren't part of it now, you can be. That you don't have to spend another day out of this family. The way it's been made, new and it's a living way too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're not marketing a procedure here. We're not going to give you a little list of rules. We're going to put you on a living way. Amen. Life all the way. It's a high way, Isaiah said. Oh. High enough the devil can't get on it. High enough that, you can't, uh, that the world can't detract you from it. It's high enough, it's safe enough. You get on it and stay on it. The scripture says if you're a fool, you won't make a mistake. Lord oh, Jesus said the same thing. If you walk in the light, you won't stumble. Now you know why those preachers fell. <laughs> they were walking in the dark. Now there are two realities that have eluded the religious masses. And I speak as one who was in that number. Two things that are very what we would call pivotal. That is, a lot of things depend on these two things. These two things are very central. That is, if you can see these two things, they clear up a lot of other things. One of them is the extent to which man fell. Now, men have debated about this. Some say, well, how far did they fall? Did they fall so they're no good at all? No, someone says, no, there's a little bit of good in them. I'm saying, well, we fell, we fell, but we still, we still have the right to choose. Others say, no, 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 no. It's got to be given to you to choose. I have people debate. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you that when you fail, it was a lot further. The human race fell a lot further than people think. Don't think for one moment that it takes an infinite God and an almighty Savior and an invincible Holy Spirit 
and an innumerable company of angels to save a bunch of people that have some good in them already. That's just a lie. That's all that is. You need saving. That means you don't have anything. That's why you need to be saved. To the extent of the fall, that's eluded people. But the other thing that's eluded them is the extent to which God has gone to save them. How far he's gone. Now you may think you've come a long way to come to Jesus, and maybe you have. But I'll tell you right now, Jesus came further to come to you than you did to come to him. He went to a great extent. There's been people died so you could have this salvation. There's been prophets that spent their life stymied, wanting to do these things, and it wasn't time to know them yet. And there's a Savior that had to stoop down and leave divine prerogatives behind and fight the devil as a man and not as God and allow himself to be ravished by the powers of darkness and cursed by God and be left in the realm of the dead for three days. That took that to save you. So it can't be a simplistic thing. Amen. I'm going to affirm in this message that nothing directly from Adam can have any inheritance in Christ. I'm going to affirm that Adam and everybody that came from him is written off and that they cannot be salvaged. I'm going to affirm that there's a new order, a new kingdom, a new race that invalidates the old. This is going to center around Christ. It's going to bring into picture the new birth, why there has to be a new birth, regeneration, why people have to be regenerated, why they have to be born again. We're going to explain those things. My text is found in the fifth chapter of Romans, where there's a parallel between Adam and Christ. I will read verses 15 through 19. We'll deal with a few more of the verses. Now, in this text, he's going to mention an offense and a transgression. And he's talking about the time Adam ate the fruit of the tree. This text will be about one sin. It's going to mention one sin that was committed. And it's going to mention one act by which all of you are delivered. So we're going to be talking about two men and two acts. Romans 5.15 Not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace